Chances are, you walk or drive right by them. Silent tributes to war dead, men and women, cut down in their prime. The statues, the plaques, the slabs of granite are silent reminders. Many people may glance their way or stop and visit them on the commemorative dates set aside to remember the fallen. Memorial Day, the last day of May, Veterans Day, November 11th. What's now called Memorial Day used to be known as Decoration Day, a day to decorate the graves of the war dead with flowers. The observance was born out of the Civil War and proclaimed in 1868. Veterans Day was declared on November 11th by President Woodrow Wilson in 1919, following the First World War, also known as the Great War. It commemorated the armistice between the Allies and Germany a year earlier, which fell at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month and was regarded as the end of the war to end all wars. Both dates are set aside to honor America's veterans for their patriotism, their love of country, and their willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. As in decades past, while some still visit cemeteries and memorials, there are those like Joe Fasnacht, who use their hands to carefully create them, and people like Tommy Clack, injured as a soldier serving in Vietnam, who not only visit them, they build the sites that contain them. We are here today uh, at the Walker Hero Veteran War Memorial Complex uh, in North Rockdale County up off of Georgia Highway 20 in between Conyers and Loganville. We actually sat on uh, Lake Randy Pointer within Black Shoals Park and uh, have got a 900-foot-long uh, memorial complex here that uh, will eventually become the Arlington of the South. That is, of course, a reference to Arlington National Cemetery the final resting place of more than 400,000 men and women who served in the U.S. military since the Civil War. The dead from earlier military conflicts have been reinterred there as well, as the cemetery stretches now across 624 acres in Arlington County, Virginia, across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. Tens of thousands of visitors walk through the rows of tombstones each year, many to observe the changing of the guards at the Tomb of the Unknowns. I think the important thing for Americans to understand is that freedom is not free. We have a segment of society that uh, serves and sacrifices to ensure that all Americans have all the freedoms they take for granted. But what's going on in America, let's say since World War II, in World War II, 14% of the population of America served in the United States military, so everybody was affected by that war. In Korea, that dropped down to 9.6%. During Vietnam, it dropped down to 6.2%. During Desert Shield, nine, uh, Desert Storm, 1991, it was down to 4%. And this current global war on terrorism, since 9-11, less than one half of 1% 1 of all Americans have served in the United States military. So fewer and fewer Americans are serving to ensure that all Americans have their freedoms. And But all Americans need to understand the cost associated with it. So we're not here to honor war. We're here to honor the warrior and his or her family, ensure that history understands that his and her sacrifice made a difference for their future. Bob Atkinson is also a Vietnam vet and a Walk of Heroes board member. That's my war, is Vietnam. So it affected a lot of, of people, you know, brothers, sisters, mothers, aunts, uncles. Everybody got affected when, when Vietnam veterans were, were leaving. So it was a hardship not only on the veteran, but people of his family. And in a lot of cases, uh, a real hardship. Uh, some gave all, so, some gave some. Harry was actually my second dad, my dad's uh, father or brother-in-law. Don and I grew up together, great cousins. For Tommy Clack, being a warrior was just something you did, part of his heritage, his inheritance. 
In my family, I am 8th generation Army. We go back to the revolutionary days, uh, landing in Savannah in 1733 with Oglethorpe, so we've been serving ever since. My son just got out in 2012 as 9th generation Army. He was one of our Army Rangers with uh, nine combat tours himself. Uh, so serving in the military is an honorable way to go. I ended up in Vietnam, uh, got injured in May of 69 and was a captain on the ground. Uh, ended up spending uh, 22 months in the hospitals, going through 33 surgeries. And back then the VA was a great, great, great entity. And I think the reason it was is that uh, the World War II generation, we Vietnam's mom and dad's generation took care of us when we got back. So we had family taking care of us. Today, there's uh, fewer and fewer veterans employed in the VA uh, workforce. Uh, most civilians have no concept of, of what it's like to be in combat, so there's, there's not that connection there. And there's just a lot of disconnect. And I think that's what you're seeing going on with the VA and the issues they've got going. You can throw all the money you want to throw at it. It's not going to solve it. It's a people issue. The employees need to be trained to understand what the veteran, male or female, depending on when they served, has gone through, uh, that could make a big difference in terms of personal context. So it's, it's an ongoing educational process. So not only do we honor uh, those that served here, but we help America understand uh, all the issues that uh, veterans and their families in the military confront, and that's just part of the education. The mission of the Walk of Heroes is simple. It is a memorial park located at Black Shoals Lake in Rockdale County, east of Atlanta. The goal is to create a common understanding of the sacrifices and the uncommon dedication of veterans and their families, according to the Walk of Heroes website. We honor not only veterans, but uh, their families. When, when us guys went to Vietnam, you know, we disrupted a lot of families. And in, in years gone by, the families really never got much recognition over this, uh, over, over us going away. And we just, we just think that the families get up uh, dysfunctional because uh, a son, a daughter, a girlfriend, a uh, boyfriend, you know, they go away. And, not, you know, and then the, the veteran has to uh, endure a lot of hardships. The main path invites people to contemplate those who fought or served in the military during the 20th century, both during wartime and in peace. It's honoring all veterans from 1900 forward. And we, we are a nonprofit, all volunteers. We have $2.8 million in the project. We need uh, between 25 and 30 million to finish it. And uh, we just have a board that uh, well, our, our objective is to raise funds and keep the literature and uh, get the word out, basically. And those involved in spreading the message are few, yet committed. We are currently uh, got a board of directors of which I am president of. We've got 14 volunteers uh, that give their time. No one gets any compensation for what they do. This is a, pretty much a labor of love to finish this complex. What you see out here was actually uh, dedicated back in uh, 2002 with different phases. The part we're sitting on right now was actually dedicated in 2009 with a stage out to uh, my far left. So there's a lot going on out here with a lot more different sites to be accomplished and that is the goal of our board of directors is to get this finished. And though sacred, like Arlington, the Walk of Heroes in Conyers is open to the public, offering a place to picnic and stroll a place for contemplation and reflection. You can come out here every day, Monday through, uh, or seven days a week except Wednesday. It is uh, open now from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, there's a sign right there to my right that marks the fact that on this path, the loop through here is one third of a mile, so three laps around the loop here is a mile. We have a lot of people that come out here and walk uh, daily. Uh, visitors are increasing in terms of the volume that we're seeing out here. Uh, you, you'll notice that there are pavers down honoring a specific veteran for his or her service. So uh, more and more people are paying homage to those and their families that served and putting a brick down uh, like in front of us that uh, will be there for history. So it, there's a lot of great things that go on. We've actually had a, a marriage ceremony out here. We had a cadet from the Citadel come out here and get his second lieutenant bar zone. We presented uh, Purple Heart. Uh, that was three years after the fact. 
Perhaps those who visit see themselves or their loved ones in the sculptures of life-size soldiers and sailors and airmen carrying the world on their shoulders. They began in this rustic studio in Ranger, Georgia, belonging to renowned artist and sculptor Joe Fasnat, whose talent was recognized early in his life. I was inspired by uh, monuments in uh, an area near my grammar school when I was a young boy, uh, Chickamauga Battlefield. My mother was farsighted enough to see that I had uh, some talent. She had been to art school and uh, she took me to uh, get art lessons when I was five years old and uh, I've done it ever since. Fosnat's design was selected in a statewide competition. This is the first sketch that I had, did for the uh, Georgia Veterans Memorial. Uh, and uh, this is the second, which is the configuration, different proportions, but very similar. And then uh, that's the maquette that I did for it. Uh, and with this stage, I'm, uh, it's you know, starting to get a little more definition, uh, try, trying to uh, get uh, an idea of where to go in the process. And this is the sailor that's part of that. And when I was doing this, I was taking photographs of people uh, and uh, I caught this little boy uh, trying to pull away from his mother. And there was something about that gesture, something about that movement that uh, I thought I could use, and uh, course, and uh, this is what I ended up going with. There's my model, who is a student of mine. Honoring those he knew, Fosnot also created the bronze statues honoring Vietnam veterans, located near the front of the James H. Sloppy Floyd Veterans Memorial Building, across the street from the Georgia State Capitol. The stories that my friends shared with me, and sometimes with great difficulty uh, and reticence, conveyed to me that there was a sense of comradeship and cooperation that they depended upon, you know, absolutely. I tried to get a moment of that when, uh, you know, they were uh, just after the action, just after the storm, a, a wounded soldier who was getting care. Uh, the helicopters had, you know, uh, let the nurses onto the field, and uh, he was, uh, uh, getting the care and one of the other soldiers was uh, standing by and staying in touch with the, uh, the helicopter to bring it back in. And uh, the, uh, that sense of immersion in the moment really was what I hoped to, to get. Artist Joe Fosnott's winning design set out not just to capture the weight of war, but the strength and the determination of the warrior for the Walk of Heroes War Memorial in Conyers, Georgia. A gentleman named Bud Sosby uh, contacted me. Uh, he was a veteran, uh, elderly gentleman, who had an idea that uh, we needed to somehow pass on to uh, subsequent generations an appreciation of the sacrifices that had been made on their behalf. And uh, this was a, uh, meant to be uh, something that could be part of a dialogue, the memorial would be. And so he had an idea for what it was to be and uh, we 
collaborated on that. And I gave my interpretation of it, uh, the different uh, parts of the service, different wars, five different parts of the service, five different wars, and uh, all in the 20th century. And I tried to uh, uh, convey a sense that uh, there was a, a mutual trust and bond over the age of the 20th century that kind of bound the different symbols of my sculpture together that people could perhaps uh, use as a reflection point. And uh, I hope that it serves that purpose. The looming sculpture above and the pavers below one's feet at the Walk of Heroes evoke a personal connection to the military one that fewer and fewer Americans experience, says Tommy Clack. Well, I think the, the, the population has grown. Back in World War II, the population was only 222 million. Today, it's currently 312 million. So it takes fewer and fewer Americans serving to accomplish the same job. But then you've got all this great technology. But we need to understand that you can fire all the smart bums and cruise missiles you want. You still got to have boots on the ground to solve the issue. And, and so uh, boots on the ground, people will always be needed, and that's where your casualties come from, is boots on the ground. Bob Atkinson knows all too well how boots on the ground can change a man, some wounds not visible to the eye, but searing to the spirit. Well, I was, uh, I was in Detroit, and uh, I got a, a call from Uncle Sam to be uh, for a physical. I passed the physical and uh, got a little shaky, so I, I joined the Marine Corps and about seven or ten days later I got drafted. So I ended up going to Vietnam, landed in Vietnam in October 1st of 66 and uh, spent uh, about a year and eight days in combat and then uh, got wounded and got to come home and uh, thought everything was fine. but. Eventually, I started into uh, alcohol, marijuana. Couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And uh, eventually, I ended up in the VA hospital in a psychiatric ward and realized that I had post-traumatic stress disorder. So since, uh, since 11 months in a psychiatric ward, uh, which was way back in the 80s, I have been doing very good, terrific. I've been alcohol-free for 23 years. So. And, and marijuana, so uh, this has been a big, a big help to me. Uh, it's a purpose, it's like giving back. Standing under the Walk of Heroes arch, perhaps he, like so many veterans, are moved to remember and to invite us to listen, to grasp war's toll on the dead and the living, and do something to make a difference. Bud Sosby started this uh, in, uh, in the late 60s, he was watching TV, and this came straight from him. He was watching TV, and he wasn't happy with the way the Vietnam veterans were being treated. So uh, he told his wife, someday he's gonna do something for those boys because it was not right the way they were being treated. So he became a commissioner in Rockdale County, and him and two other commissioners started uh, this memorial as a, a Vietnam memorial. And it has grown into uh, what you see today. I'm honored to be part of that uh, effort. Uh, I think that there, uh, there is, uh, every age is different, of course. Every age believes they're different. But as you age personally, as I have grown older, I come to see the similarities more often than not. And uh, the... Uh, uh, the things that people suffered and died for in the first part of our sin, you know, the 20th century, uh, are now coming back around. This uh, sense of nationalism, uh, these. Uh, 
uh, you know, the sense that uh, there's a somehow a, a guard or a system that has changed beyond recognition and that we're starting not to recognize our own, some of our own social structures. That was very much uh, what uh, the First World War was about. My grandfather was uh, 18 when he joined, uh, and he was a um, trained as a blacksmith uh, in uh, 1914 19, uh, or so. In 1916, he joined up with a troop called the 40 and 8, and there were 40 mules for eight soldiers, and they were the uh, the truckers. They were they they transported the goods and whatever for the soldiers. And when he exited the war, he was driving a truck. It had changed. That world was changing so fast. You know, and I talked to him uh, when I was young. Uh, he he said it, it. You know that that the world changed so fast that he didn't recognize it. You know, even as a young man. So uh, I think you know what comes around goes around. We are very much in a time that we need. Uh, to uh, kind of have faith in each other. And uh, our institutions are changing, and uh, we're just going to have to uh, accept that and, uh, you know, kind of go back to the basics of uh, believing in ourselves and our fellow man. The Walk of Heroes project receives no assistance from the government, relying on private donations. Uh, right now we've got a big statewide project going on trying to raise uh, $162,000 to uh, refurbish this complex, become a volunteer and help uh, the veterans community and the military community and their families uh, in all the needs that they do have. Uh, for example, when we call up the Georgia 48th Brigade, which is the uh, Georgia National Guard, those families uh, don't have their loved ones here and, and need our help to sustain life while they're gone for that tour of duty. So we've got an important role to play as civilians and uh, we just want to get all people on the same page uh, honoring uh, the service and sacrifice of anybody and everybody that's ever put the uniform on. The Walk of Heroes hosted the traveling Vietnam Wall Memorial in May of 2015. Dramatic video of the exhibit was captured from a drone taken by a former Iraqi Afghanistan Army infantryman. I'd like to tell, uh, tell everyone to, to come and see it. It's, uh, it's well worth the trip. And at some point we hope to have, uh, have it completed. That's our, our dream. And we just keep uh, pushing on. Oh, it's definitely a work in progress. I mean, we have, uh, we have an enclave for World War I, two, Korea, Vietnam, Persian Gulf, and the war on terrorism. Each one of those will have first-hand accounts of someone that was in that war conflict. Then there'll be a set of walls telling what was happening at the at home front, what was happening here at home. Then you'll come back around to the Walk of Heroes. The Walk of Heroes is a sidewalk, starts in 1900, goes to 1999 at, at present time. It's a 13-foot slab of marble, or not marble, but granite goes across the sidewalk. It's engraved every time we sent troops, or every year we sent troops to another country, it's engraved in 13-foot slab of marble. Uh, at, at that, the Walk of Heroes just start at 1900. That would be an enclave for World War I, to Korea again, uh, so on. And then uh, that'll be a history lesson. Teachers will be able to come here with a field trip, punch in a cur cur curriculum he or she wants to teach about certain battles or, or whatever for World War I, to Korea. Vietnam, Persian Gulf, and the War on Terrorism, and uh, a monitor system will be here, and she'll be able to, she or he will be able to teach her class right here at the Walk of Heroes. We know of nothing like it.
Well, I think what's going on in America today, and I do, I travel as a public speaker, so I'm around the country year round and have been for 45 years. You see our, our communities are less and less oriented towards patriotism. Back when I was in school, we, we were in school on Memorial Day, for example, so we all understood what Memorial Day was. Now the schools are out long before that. Uh, people have forgotten that June 14th is Flag Day. The most people don't understand what July 4th is really all about. And, and very few Americans understand what Veterans Day November 11th is about. Uh, they, there used to be a time when schools took Veterans Day off to go and participate in Veterans Day uh, ceremonies. That doesn't happen anymore. So we veterans in America are the ones reminding America of the service and sacrifice. We're the ones that hold the programs. You know, We have a Memorial Day program out here, for example, on May 30th. We'll have a big program, uh, uh, you know, November 11th for Veterans Day. We have events out here going on uh, throughout the year, but our, our purpose is to educate the current and future generations that uh, you do need to understand there are Americans who, who serve and sacrifice to ensure you've got all that you take for granted. I really appreciate the uh, efforts that people in our country uh, go to uh, to preserve the sense of the sanctity of the past, really. I mean, it's easy to look back with a critical eye. I mean, there's always something that could have been better. But uh, just like when I'm, you know, having to let go of my sculptures, I mean, they, they, you know, the people that you know, build these spaces for us to collectively, as a society, gather and, uh, you know, just celebrate the, our society. I mean, it was, uh, you know, uh, I really love that reflecting pool. And when you look down uh, at the, uh, you know, the... Lincoln Memorial and the you know, the river beyond. It's uh, it's a very special place, and you know I, I, I'm glad to be a, you know kind of in a small parallel way part of that kind of effort. For many veterans and their families, the military is an extended family. There is what's considered the brotherhood of war perhaps thicker than family sometimes. You go to war to die for the guy on the right or the left of you, it said. You think about those you served with and those whose memory is carved into stone and shaped and cast in bronze.